This is the Kruger National Park open reception. Here is my entry and exit permit. You have to keep this safe. When you're going into the park, when you're going out the park, they will look at, look at it to make sure that you have slept the correct night and that you're in the right vehicle. So please keep this safe. Put it in your cubby hole, put it in your documents folder. And most of your receptions will look like this. They'll have a counter. You just go up and hand that form in. And usually the, the, the shop where you get all your maps and food and all that stuff is not at the reception. It's away from the reception. The reception's its own building. Okay, so here at the top, you've got the gate name, you've got the date, you've got your reservation number if you're staying overnight, there's overnight, there's day visitor crossing the border, then you just got to select which one you are here, yeah, I'm a South African resident, if you're not from South Africa, then you would go here, 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 then you've got your vehicle registration, you put that there, trailer registration, you put that there, motor vehicle, if it's a normal motor vehicle, it's this first one here, motor vehicle less than 16 seats, then you've got the other ones like buses and caravans and safari vehicles and so on and so forth, uh, sorry, I'm just checking the camera, then you got to put your name at the bottom, um, just check that it is in go down a bit there it is in name surname province passport if you don't have your passport um, your ID number you put your passport number signature driver number number and alternative number then you head to the back and you fill out the rest for the same today I am your host your presenter for this episode into the Kruger National Park I have spent 10,000 plus hours immersed in wildlife natural environments over the last six years since I was two years old I have been immersed in nature environments I have 24 years of experience with wild animals I've grown up with them I've gotten to know them intimately and personally and I believe I am the best nature connection to be expressing to you what I have learned and to be teaching you a little bit more what it means to live with nature and to be connected to nature so for me the Kruger National Park is an exceptional example it is one of the most diverse and large nature parks in the world it is the third largest nature park in the world the Kruger National Park run by the sand parks which is South African National Parks it is a partly run government organization and partly private it is 1.9 million hectares which is if I'm not mistaken it's about times three or times 3.5 you're looking at about five or six million acres it's a very very large area in the last 25 years somewhere in the 90s if I'm not mistaken they dropped the fences with the Greater Kruger National Park these are private reserves now the animals can move freely over the last 20 years that was another million hectares so you're looking at three million hectares which is about seven or eight million acres so third largest park national park in the world the first largest national park in the world is the Serengeti uh, and the Masai Mara in Tanzania and Kenya the second largest is the Namib Desert a Kruger National Park has in the in, in comparison to those two parks has more diversity because it has all the animals we've got your big five which would be your rhino your buffalo your elephant your lion your leopard but i like to extend it to the magnificent eight which would be your cheetah your wild dog and hyena those eight animals can be found 
quite easily within the Kruger National Park. They are not common, so to speak, but they are seen frequently and regularly, which would be something that you wouldn't find in the Masai Mara, Kenya, or even in the Namib Desert. They do not have very they don't have very many of those animals in the namib desert so the kruger national park to me is a really good foundation to understanding nature and i think if you were a first time safari traveler the kruger national park would be a great place to start it has gotten commercial over the last few years as self-driving is something that is allowed one can actually rent their own car and go into the kruger national park or a person can hire a tour guide, a nature guide, to take them in a safari jeep into the Kruger National Park for the day or for the night, which I recommend. Going for the night is a lot better. You get to enjoy more of that uh, dusk period, the sunset period, the golden hour, and you get to enjoy that morning period being the first person out on the roads. When you're coming in from outside of the park for the day, you, you waste time getting to the park, driving to the gates, and then also leaving. You have to leave early because you have to be considerate about the fact you have to get back home. And our roads on the exterior of Kruger are very rural. Um, they, they have speed limits of about 100 kilometers an hour. They are wild animals. They can also be domesticated animals like cows and goats. And then there's also villages. It's a rural area, so there are villages where people live. Uh, so this is something that I would like to start with. If you are visiting the Kruger National Park, I would say one thing that stands out for me about the Kruger and many of the reserves in South Africa is that there are rural settlements around cows, cows these the parks. Road, cows so on the road. So you've got to be very road, vigilant road, when you are driving into these parks. There can be speed bumps, potholes, cows and goats, children crossing the road, and then, you know, crazy drivers, cars that are not roadworthy or um, are just in a rush to get to a place. So those five things you definitely need to be careful about. You know, do your research, which gate is the best for you to enter the park, especially down south, your Crocodile Bridge, your Malalan, your Numbi, your Pabeni, and your Paul Kruger Gate are pretty crazy to get to. Phone a tourism agency, near the t uh, near these gates like Nelspreit, you could definitely phone a tourism agency there or uh, in Hazy View, you could phone a tourism agency there if you are in those two areas. You are also more than welcome to get in contact with me and I can give you some information on, on these gates because for me as a local, having driven to these gates many, 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 many times, hundreds of times, it is still something that I'm vig vigilant of and conscious of because of the fact that it can be so dangerous and you don't want to start your trip off on a bad note. These are five really important tips if you are self-driving. Number one, stay on the road. Do not go off-road, it's illegal. Number two, stay in your car. Please, it is dangerous to get out of your car or to sit on the windowsill unless it is a designated area. Number three, please do not go off into the distance, way off into the middle of nowhere. You can get lost and it is very dangerous. Number four, please speak to people who live there and know the area. And number five, do not drive fast. You can hit and kill an animal. And there are also potholes in the road and small animals in the road. Please try and be aware of the fact that you're in a place that's got more on offer than just your big majestic animals that are that are more frequently seen, more frequently marketed, more frequently made um, exciting. The small stuff is just as exciting. And in my opinion, when you focus on the small stuff, you're more likely to see those bigger things 
that have been marketed to be more exciting. For me, I love the Kruger National Park because of that reason. When I go to the Kruger National Park, yes, I'd love to see a leopard. That is my favorite animal. I'd love to see 10 leopards. And I wouldn't mind seeing that every time. But to be honest, I enjoy the holistic experience of what trees will I see today? What birds will I see today? How will the animals interact with one another? What experiences and um, what experiences, what sceneries will I see? Because that makes up the majority of the day. Seeing a lion or a leopard or an elephant or a giraffe probably makes up 5% of that day or that trip, what we call a safari. So if you are staying overnight, the Kruger National Park is also a place that gets a lot of visitors. There are about one to two million people that visit the Kruger National Park a year. This is a lot more than most national parks. And the reason for this is because Kruger has made it quite easy for people to come and visit and have an experience. There are many safari companies, many travel companies, uh, many tour operators here in the town that I live. Um, and I used to work for many of them. Uh, there are about seven to 15 tour operators in the nearest town to me, which is 30 minutes away from here. And they all offer daily safari. Some of them even offer nightly safari. So please do your research, uh, figure out and compare at least two to three companies.
here we have a beautiful flap-necked chameleon one of the bigger chameleon species and he is crossing the road uh, it is about eight o'clock in the morning so it's a good time to find these types of animals as it gets warmer uh, then they stop moving around because they are cold-blooded the biggest challenge we face in our national parks is actually ourselves because this is the last stand for these animals so to speak this is their home these are their sanctuaries we need to start educating ourselves as to why these environments are so important and a lot of parks have been turned into uh, a revenue stream a commercial revenue stream and this is great and all because it allows us you know obviously with money to fix the park and maintain certain things but also we've got to realize that the animals don't care about the money the animals don't care about us they actually would do perfectly fine without us there so we've got to constantly keep innovating and researching our impact the impact that we have on the environment the impact we have on the animals and this is important because the animals are always changing and the environment is always adapting and so must we it's extremely important that as we continue to change with technology and with our cars and with the different uh, plastics we use or food we buy we need to understand what damages and what what damages we can do to these places with these different objects these different things but also how are we positively affecting this environment what are we adding to this environment and that's extremely important because this is essentially like i said the place where the animals live this is their home and it's important that we respect that because nature plays an integral part in the world's functioning the world doesn't function without all these animals coming together to work in a symbiosis and that's something that i find incredible that you find these ecosystems with so many different animals working together and they are just thriving in harmony it's it's beautiful it's absolutely beautiful yes we do face struggles on the perimeter of our national parks like i said there are many villages many towns and a lot of people but there are there are extensive electric fences around many of the parks throughout the world some parks do not have fences and there are problems with the animals coming into contact with people because they get curious and there might be some sort of food source or people are obviously going into those environments and connect trying to interact or, and maybe cause trouble with these animals but a lot of them especially in south africa and in this example kruger national park it has a very big fence around it that has a lot of electricity going through it and it it actually protects the animals it keeps them in and it keeps the people out it used to be the other way around it used to be to keep the people out and the animals in but now it's to keep the animals in and the people out so this is something that we need to start consciously being aware of and start working towards solutions start having conversations about it because the more we talk about it the more we find ways to mitigate the negative influence that mankind has on nature because we have evolved and become the apex predator and this is all well and good but now we need to understand what role do we play in nature and what role is negatively affecting nature because of the fact that we've evolved and become that apex predator. In closing, I believe it's our fundamental duty to continue to innovate and find new ways to live in harmony with nature. Nature is something that is so near and dear to my heart and there are people all over the world who feel the same way that I do. Not only enjoy it, but are passionate about it, and love it and want to preserve it for the generations that are living now but also for future generations that's what drives me that's what connects me to nature and to the animals is that i want to understand them for 
my children one day, hopefully. And I also want to preserve them and protect them for my children one day. So I think we can all work together in very simple, small ways. And that's just do our research, put some effort into understanding who are the companies out there that are actually looking after the environment, who are the people out there that are passionate about the environment and trying to do good for the environment, and how can you help them? Not only by supporting them, by giving them business, but how else can you help them? What skills do you have that you can use to to make their lives better because they are, are trying to protect the animals and look after the animals. But also when it comes down to choosing the products that you buy, make sure that you are buying products that are ethnically sourced, that are good for the planet and good for you. There's no better way to live than to live by eating and doing good conscious things. So when you are buying your food, try not to buy things in plastic. Take your own bags. When you are going into nature reserve, take a plastic bag and do not throw your litter out the window. This is something that we struggle with in South Africa. The lack of education with people throwing stuff out the window in national parks is really high. And these plastics or tins or bottles can hurt the animals. And as we said, this is the last stand for these animals. So we've got to be conscious of this. We've got to be thoughtful of this. And let's just do our best. Let's try to be nature connected and absolutely love our environments the way we love ourselves. So thank you so much for joining me on this episode. 